Sending emails in Power Automate Desktop is straightforward. I want to send dynamic emails, that is, specific content to a specific recipient. So here I have four students. It could be an Excel sheet with 100 students. But for now, this is a fine example. I have four columns, name, email, homework, and deadline. Their name is here. I want to have that filled in. They have separate email addresses. Because I don't want to spam anyone or myself, I just use this 10 minute email. You can fill in your email or your 10 minute email here in this column. This Excel sheet can be downloaded in the video description. So you can change it here. Their homework, uh, you can see Anna needs to learn Power Automate, Becky needs Power Automate Desktop, Carly needs Power Automate, that here we have a space and Dora needs UiPath. But don't worry too much about this. This is just to show that we can fill in dynamic content in these emails. They also have a, a separate deadline, so I want them to be filled in properly. Let's show how it works. And this 10 minute email, we can just refresh the page and then get 10 more minutes or click 10 more minutes here. And that is the one that we use here. So in Power Automate Desktop, let's first read this Excel sheet. So let me close it. I downloaded mine to my desktop. You can do the same. So shift right click like this, copy as path. We will use that path. The first we'll do is to set a variable with that path in. We'll drag it in. So here I'll call my variable Excel path like this and just control V, paste it in. Delete the quotation marks and click save. So now I want to launch Excel. So here I'll say launch and I'll drag in an Excel. I will not open up a blank document, but I'll open the following document. Now I could type in the path or find it by clicking here, or we have created a variable for it. This is actually best practice because we want to make sure that if this path changes, we can uh, update it quickly and imagine that we use this path a lot in our flow. This will be convenient. I will not have the Excel instance visible and I will click save like that. So now I also want to read the data from the Excel sheet. So I'll find an, a read from Excel worksheet and drag it in. I want to retrieve everything uh, that is in the worksheet. And in the advanced, I'll say first line of range contains column names. I'll take that one. In. The variables produced that will be Excel data. So then I can click save. You'll also need a close Excel. So I'll close my Excel. That one is here. That will just close the Excel instance and do not save it. It's fine. So we created, we read our data. Now we can start to send our emails, but let's just see that this works, that we can launch Excel, read the data, close it again. And this is just to show that our data is over here. There you go. So name, email, homework, deadline. If we wanted to make it a little bit more stable, say that we have two sheets in this Excel sheet. I know this is not an Excel lesson, but best practice is to always activate the correct sheet. And here, um, let me open it again. Imagine that we have this one as last active. Then we will start reading here. We could not use these data. So we want to make sure we are unconscious. Right click, rename, control C, close it down again. Then in Power Automate Desktop, I'll just, just find a quick activate worksheet. So active, wait, uh, set active Excel worksheet. You can see um, there's a lot of actions to fill in. So set active Excel worksheet. And then right before the read, I'll just paste in the worksheet name and click save. I will not show you that this works, but trust me, or you can just try to run the robot, pause the video and do it. So now we need to launch the Outlook. I'll find a launch Outlook instance. And this is necessary to have an Outlook account on your computer. So yeah, we'll launch the Outlook instance like that. And now I want to say, I want to iterate to each one of the rows in our data. This data table over here, the Excel data got re read into this data table. And I want to take them one by one and then process them. So what I want to do is first take the for each like this and drag it in here. The value to iterate. 
that is the Excel data. Click this X, double click the Excel data. Here you can see that we refer to the current item, that is the row that we have as current item. I want to refer to it as student. So I click save. So now we're iterating through each one of the rows one by one. Since we need to send separate emails, that's, that's why we do it like this. So in Outlook, find a send email message to Outlook and drag it in. The account, that is the account, the data file that you use in Outlook, minus call this. Who do we want to send it to? And now it gets uh, not tricky, but uh, we just need to know what we do. Since we refer to each row as student, I want to say to, take this X here and then go find the student and double click it. Now I just need to say, what column do I want to fill in? This is the email column. In case you forgot, you can always open the Excel sheet and inspect. So here I'll have a hard bracket, single quotation marks, and then I'll say not student, but email, single quotation mark, and a hard bracket more. I also want to have a subject. And here I'll just say, remember to do your homework. And then I can fill in the body. I can also add attachments and everything more. But for now, this simple exercise will do. So here I'll say, hey, and then I want a student's name. So click this X here again, you know the drill, say student. Inside here, hard bracket, single quotation mark, and then I'll just say name, single quotation mark, hard bracket, end. So, and then I'll say, remember to do your, and again, um, I need to say, what kind of homework do this student want to do? So I click here, take the student, go in here, and then pick the column in the Excel sheet that I want to use. So I'll just make two hard brackets, two single quotation marks at once. And I'll say homework. So this is saying, go to the current row, homework column, and use what's there. So I'll say, make your this kind of homework, homework, no later than. We also want to get the deadline, that is the deadline column. And again, I'll just find a student. Go in here, do this, hard bracket, single quotation marks, and then say deadline. And again, this is the Excel column names. So this is not uh, standardized um, references. This is just what I chose to call it in, um, uh, in Excel. Now I can add a signature. Let me just copy the one from my email where I say kind regards on the Jensen and then my social media links. So now I can click save. We have everything we need and we even have our 10 minute email here. Let me just get 10 more minutes just for, um, just for simplicity. So now we have 10, we have an empty inbox. Let's see if it works. Again, if you want to send it to another place than 10 minute email, feel free to change the emails in the Excel sheet. Now let's just inspect that we can actually send dynamic content. So we're launching Outlook, iterating through it, and let's go to our 10 minute email. We have four emails, you can see them down here. Let's pick the first one. Hey Anna, remember to do your power automate homework no later than and then we have 1 30 2023 at 12 a.m. Since we didn't specify um, a time, this is how it looks. We can easily work with date and times in Power Automate for desktop. You can click the video up in here to make sure uh, that you'll understand everything about date time. But since this is not the lesson, let's just see that we here we have a Becky and with a Power Automate desktop homework, we have Carly and we have Dora. That's it. That's how easy it is to automate sending emails in Power to Make Desktop. Click the video up here. That is the next lesson I prefer to you to make you an expert Power Automate Desktop developer.